want you to know that God speaks to you every single day, but you might not know how to recognize it. It's part of our salvation benefit. There is no lack in the kingdom of heaven. We were never to put our faith in anyone other than the Holy Spirit to teach us about our creator and his creation. The Holy Spirit is the wisdom of heaven. We become so dependent on him. And I was being taught to discern what thoughts were mine, what were from the word of God and how to catch the intrusive thoughts of the enemy. So the title of today's message is how to hear the voice of God. Jesus explained to us in John 5 verse 19, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. This has to apply to me as well. And Galatians 5 25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. I should be walking in the Spirit. Jesus said I could do this because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me since salvation. Jesus is our example. So we should be hearing, seeing, walking with God. And many people want to feel the things of the Spirit, but they're taught that feelings are emotional. They are of the soul. So they are not of the Spirit. But this is not true. There are emotions in your spirit. Ezekiel 3.14, so the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. And I went embittered by the sins of Israel in the rage of my spirit. And the hand of the Lord was so strong on me. So emotions can be spiritual and also come from God himself, like a holy indignation to sin. Righteousness, joy, peace are bound in your spirit. How can you sense your spirit? Jesus lived out of the flow of the spirit, getting divine words and visions from God. God says we are a vessel whom he desires to fill, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We contain the Holy Spirit, who Jesus described as rivers of living water flowing within, John 7, 37, from the throne room into our innermost being. So living in the Spirit means intentionally staying tuned in to the flow of the Holy Spirit within you. Habakkuk was a prophet who heard, he spoke the word of God, and he moved out of visions. In Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2, there are four keys to hearing the voice of God, and this teaches us how to live as Jesus lived. Here they are. I will stand at my guard post. I will keep watch and see. Three, what he will speak to me. And then four, the Lord said, record the vision. And I also found that John in Revelation also followed these four keys, as well as many others in the Bible. So standing at your guard post is setting yourself apart to go spend time in the presence of God. This is a place of rest with expectation and excitement. I'm going to spend time with God, even if you are going through great trials and suffering. So picture a guard post above a walled city where you can be still, feel safe, know that God is your God. He is protecting you in this city, yet you're in a guard post above all that is going on beneath you. Now, Moses and Jesus met with God, understanding that God had much to say to them. He is our father. He directs our steps. We are in the service of the Lord, but God meets us here because he comes to serve us. God is still serving us. So we enter to to meet, to commune with God. Father, what would you like to say to me today? And Father also wants to know what you want to say to him. And key number two is I will keep watch and see. So I would ask God to speak to me, but I would also ask the Holy Spirit to teach me to look for vision as I listen to the voice of the Lord. Because faith comes by hearing the word of God. So pay attention 
attention because all of your gates are involved here, just as Jesus's was. So asking for vision literally changed the way I read my Bible. Paul prayed that the eyes of his heart would be enlightened, Ephesians 1.17. I can remember reading about the Hebrews in the wilderness, and I was in the vision sitting on the mountainside watching the Hebrews going around the same circle as I was listening and reading the Word of God. This is part of Bible meditation. Now, to meditate means to ponder, to converse within yourself, and to speak out loud, to declare, to pray, to talk, reading my Bible out loud. But it does not mean to empty your mind. That is not what God tells us to do. Now in Hebrew, meditate means to study, to imagine, and to muse. Muse is a source of inspiration where God releases creativity from heaven into us. But to imagine is to picture Bible stories stories so that we can see them as we read them, listening what the Lord is saying to us. So is it okay for us to see ourselves in a Bible story? Is it okay to see yourself in the Bible verse, Peggy, by Jesus's stripes, you are healed? Is that okay? Is it okay to say, Suzanne, God delivers you from all of your afflictions? Of course it is. This is how we should be reading the Bible. This is how Jesus did what he saw his father doing. So I would pray before I open the Bible. Holy Spirit, overshadow everything in my Bible and prayer time with you. You showed Jesus how to hear and see what his father was saying and doing. And I know you will do the same for me. That's the Holy Spirit's job. So now I am reading while watching the Holy Spirit flow in vision. I asked the Holy Spirit to show me how to see with the eyes of my heart. Do you know that's part of your salvation benefit? I learned what we call our imagination is literally a chamber of imagery for us to relate with God. And this is why the enemy wants to fill it with filth. Because if you're watching porn, your chamber of imagery is going to be filled with filth. Built. But our chamber of imagery was created to have vision, hearing, relationship with God. So Hebrews in the Bible tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, these eyes, the eyes of your heart, are your spiritual eyes. And when your spiritual eyes are on Jesus, we are able to operate in the supernatural, where we can see those Bible stories come to life. Now, Jesus allows us to do what we could not do on our own. We can read any book, yes? We can read a book that is not of God and our mind will still form those pictures, but our images, our thoughts must be kept holy. So isn't this what Jesus did in the flesh? He lived, walked, saw in the scriptures. He was always moving in the word of God, even though he is the word of God made flesh. And Jesus, he is the example for us in all things. The eyes are the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Matthew 6, 22. So this is what it means to walk in the spirit. Do you have to think about walking? Do you have to think about putting one foot in front of the other? Do you have to think about whether you should start with your left foot or your right foot? No, you just walk. You just do it. Thoughts and pictures flow in and out of our minds all day and even while we're sleeping. For example, if you are reading the Bible about the second coming of Jesus, if you think of the second coming of Jesus. You can picture Jesus on a horse and what he is wearing. The Bible tells us what he is wearing. That vision 
came from God. But you can choose in the same vision to change his clothes. You can see what he looks like in a purple robe. That came from you. And when you have evil thoughts, they describe the devil, the accuser, the liar, everything that does not line up with the word of God. And we command all of that out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Emmanuel means God is with you. So what did he look like to you when you saw him on that horse? Did you see all of him? Did you just see his robes? Did you just see the horse? What did you see? For some people, they only see the horses behind him, but you are looking to see. Does that make sense? Now, many people stop the visionary flow of the Holy Spirit in the Bible because they believe that they cannot see see God and that they cannot see in the spirit. But Jesus is teaching us to only do what we saw him do. This is how we follow Jesus. So whatever reason we think that we shouldn't see in the spirit, it's not biblical. So we look to see the glory and the goodness of God. You're reading your Bible. And most people will quote, oh, Peggy, you're wrong because no man has seen the Father and lived. But the scripture actually says, no man has seen the Father except he who is from God. He himself sees the Father. John 6, 46, the same Emmanuel who is right there with you. John 14, 8, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus replied, Philip, Peggy, have I been with you all this time, and still you do not know me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So how do you see in the Spirit? You see from the Word of God into a godly image. Jesus healed me. And those thoughts will bring you right into a vision. I do only what I see my father doing. You are thinking of the goodness of God dwelling right there with you. Only allow the visions of what the Bible said is true to remain with you. So if the enemy's telling you, look, you're not going to let that stay. That's your job. You're doing housekeeping. You are the temple of the Lord out in Jesus name. Philippians 4, 8 says, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. And if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. If your boss at work is being unfair to you, what do you do? How do you walk in the spirit? You look to flow. Holy Spirit, right here, rivers of living water. You see the word and the word says the battle belongs to the Lord, not you. And then you say, spirit to spirit, Lord, what would you have me do? And see how the Holy Spirit led Jesus to respond in each situation. Jesus had to deal with all kinds of people. That's something just to meditate on. Now, Abraham and Sarah, they use their own thoughts to have a child. That is human reasoning. It is not revelation knowledge from heaven. So the third key, Habakkuk said he will watch within to see what God will speak to him. Just think about that. What does God's voice sound like? God's voice often comes as a spontaneous flowing thought. We know that God's voice is described in the Bible as a mighty sound of rushing water. Most people do not hear the audible voice of God, but all of us get spontaneous thoughts every single day and night. Watch the flowing images and thoughts within. John 7, 37 through 39. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So we have the Holy Spirit. What's he doing? We allow this flow. We don't want to stop this flow. And in this place, all of the promises of God are available to us, spirit to spirit. If I am down, having a really hard day, I turn to flow. God, I'm having a really hard day. I know the Lord 
will lift me up. No matter what you are going through, we are in constant flow and in two-way communication with God himself. So to flow in the spirit is to have such an intimate relationship with God that you recognize what he wants you to do. Acts 16, 9. During the night, Paul had a vision. Come over to Macedonia and help us. So the fourth key, record the vision. Write out the flow of thoughts and visions within you. I like to record all because when I go back, and read my journal, not only am I receiving daily flow and direction, but the Lord is continuing a story. It's an amazing, intimate part of our relationship. Now, this is different than just me journaling, because journaling can be one way, write the scripture, write what I feel about it. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the thoughts as well as the scriptures that I'm reading. And if you know anything about the Bible, does God want to be in relationship with you? What did he put on the table for you to come back into relationship with him? So most times I will ask him a question like, I'll write down a scripture. Lord, what do you mean by this? Help me to understand your desires deeper in the scripture. And I will write down the thoughts, what I'm thinking. Now, is this legal to do? Absolutely. The prophets did it. The psalmist did it. Now, if you think that these four keys are out of your reach, just give it a try. Look at King David. King David was a fearless warrior. He had a lot of rage in his spirit. Yet he would go into God's presence and he learned to write the most beautiful poetry and song. Your level of faith will arise. I mean, I heard that God was with me. Now talk to him. You will absolutely understand he is speaking to you. So this spontaneous flow will become the food that you have hungered for, the living water that your body desires to drink, coming right from the throne of heaven. Jesus saved you to restore your relationship with the Father. Do you think Jesus wants you to talk with the Father? Absolutely. So the only thing that is stopping us from hearing, seeing, walking, just as Jesus did on the earth, is us. We have to get over ourselves. We have to catch those thoughts thoughts that came from the enemy, that we should not be doing this, cast them out, clean our thoughts up, read a scripture, and expect God to be alive. He is the word made flesh. He's not in the tomb. He is alive in you, in that word forevermore. So how can you test to see if your journaling is with scripture? Number one, do you feel the Holy Spirit at peace within you? And can you share what you received with someone dear to you who knows the word of God? You know, in the beginning, it might just be a couple of sentences. Does what you received line up with scripture? Can you relate a scripture to what God is saying to you? Does it line up with the names of Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, Savior, wonderful counselor, your healer and deliverer. And you can even do this as a family. Go to the kitchen table, get the kids. All of you write down, Lord, here is one reason why I love you. Then each of you go to your room, two or three minutes, write down your thoughts, come back to the kitchen table and share what you each receive. The word states that in a multitude of counselors, there is wisdom and safety. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every rhema, every spoken word of God is confirmed. But never ask what your friends think about what God is saying to you, because that's different. That is human reasoning. Does this sound like it came from the God of my Bible? We want what God thinks. Jesus did not do anything of his own initiative. Think about that. And God says to us, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Most of us wondered, okay, God, well, how do I give it to you? This is how. Journaling is where I stay in faith, writing out, casting all of my cares upon the Lord, receiving his direction and answer. So to conclude, Revelation 1, 9 through 11, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, stillness. 
I heard a voice behind me, spontaneity and flow, saying, write in a book what you see, the vision. So how can you tell if you are doing this wrong? Wrong thoughts and images will cause a person to go backwards in life. Jeremiah 7, 24. But they did not listen. They would not incline their ear but they walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backwards and not forward. So people of God, remain passionate to hold on to your images of biblical truth. The spirit of God is a divine flow moving in us and in this world today. And we will also soon be seeing very important signs in our sky. I'm going to do a separate video. Stay tuned to YouTube and subscribe if you haven't. The eclipse will become very personal for each one of us.